One of the biggest challenges that students face when they are studying the poetry collection and more specifically the relationships poetry collection is there are 15 poems to remember. There's 15 poems to memorize and of course when you're writing about your selected poems you need to obviously make points related to language, form and structure. Of course it can be really easy to drown in all of this information so what I decided to do was create a mind map of all 15 poems within the uh, Edexcel Relationships Anthology and what I'll do is I'll walk you through the language form and structure techniques so you can point out for each poem and I've selected specifically three quotes per poem. Of course, if you only have enough headspace to remember two quotations, look at the three quotes that I select and pick out and narrow it down to two quotes for yourself, okay? So let's begin with the first poem in the relationships collection, which is La Belle Dame Sans Merci. Remember, when you're making a form and structure observation, the poem is laid out in an A, B, C, B rhyme scheme. It's very regular and very predictable rhyming pattern. Now, in terms of the quotations, to select for this particular poem, the first is what can ail thee, okay? This is when the narrator, the speaker, is addressing the knight directly, and this is repeated throughout the poem, okay? So of course you wanna talk about repetition, which is structure. Now of course, what this does is it creates intrigue within us as readers. We see this knight, he seems to be wasting away, we don't know why he's wasting away. That's the first quotation. The second two quotations are specifically related to this bell dam, this beautiful woman who is without thanks. We learned that she sings a fairy song, okay? So sing a fairy song. This uses sibilance, which is a language technique that you can point out. What this is illustrating is her supernatural power which seduced him. The third quotation, to remember for La Belle Dame Sans Merci is when we learned that she had wild, wild eyes. Of course, what this is illustrating is her nature as a woman, we would call her the femme fatale, who misleads this knight and he becomes seduced by this supernatural power that she possesses before she casts him away. That's La Belle Dame Sans Merci. The second poem in the anthology to of course remember and to be very confident in writing about is A Chartered Sick Grandfather. Now, when making a form observation in terms of also the rhyming pattern that it's written in, it is written in an A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D rhyming scheme, okay? Now, the first quotation I would suggest is when we learn that the speaker, who obviously is really sad about his grandfather who's passing away, they remember how the grandfa grandfather would smile and stroke my head. Of course here, sibilance illustrates the close and paternal love and the close paternal relationship that he had with his grandfather. The second quotation to remember with the childhood grandfather is when he now realizes that his granddad is no longer strong or powerful. He literally is foreshadowing his eventual death because you can see his grandfather's wan and hollow ellipsis cheek. Now here what you'd probably focus on is the adjectives wan and hollow which is illustrating and foreshadowing the eventual death of his grandfather. And the third and final quotation which of course illustrates that his grandfather has died, the grandfather that he loved so much, is when they end by saying you do not hear me dad. And what you can talk about here is two things. Um, the alliteration of D in do not and dad and also this is a declarative sentence at the end of the poem. The third poem in the collection is She Walks in Beauty. This is by Lord Byron. Now, in terms of form, make sure you point out that it's written in an A, B, A, B, A, B rhyme scheme. Now, in terms of the quotations, I would suggest firstly talking about how the speaker, Byron, uses celestial, heavenly imagery to describe how perfect this woman is. He refers to her using the terms cloudless climbs, ellipsis, starry skies. We call this celestial imagery. Now in this case, language technique to point out is alliteration of C in cloudless and climbs and also S in starry and skies, but also mention in terms of imagery that this is celestial imagery. The second quotation is when we learn that the woman is described as soft, calm, eloquent, okay? So soft, so calm, eloquent, which you can use ellipsis to um, separate the three terms. This is root of three, and of course, this is used to encapsulate, to capture the perfection of this woman. The third and final quotation is when he ends by talking about how her love is innocent, and that he uses an exclamatory sentence, which is a structural technique, to show that this woman who walks in beauty is completely perfect, and she's also innocent. The next poem in this collection, to remember, of course, and to memorize, is A Complaint by Wordsworth. Now, in terms of 
form and structure observation. Remember that it's written in ABABCC rhyme scheme. The first quotation I would suggest to remember for this particular poem is when the speaker is really sad about the loss of their love. On the one hand, you could suggest that this poem is talking about the end of a friendship, but also you could also interpret this poem as the end of a love relationship, okay? We know contextually that Wordsworth is talking about his best friend, Samuel Coleridge, where the relationship fell apart. Now, the first quotation is when they're speaking about how the previous friendship was a fountain at my fond heart's door. Technique to point out is the use of alliteration FF. The second quotation is when they're talking about the love that they held for this person and they describe it as murmuring, sparkling, living love. Here you want to talk about rule of three, which is language. And the third and final quotation is when they end by saying it all doesn't matter now. They're feeling really, really dis depressed because they end with this rhetorical question, what matter? And of course, a rhetorical question is a structural technique. The next poem in this collection is Neutral Tones by Thomas Hardy. Now, in terms of a form and structure observation, it's written in an ABBA rhyme scheme. How the poem begins foreshadows the end of this love relationship, okay? The first quotation which illustrates this is when the speaker sets the tone of the day. They state, winter day ellipsis, sun was white. Here they are using pathetic fallacy, which is language, to describe the death of their relationship. The second quotation is, when they're speaking and describing the lover's smile, which was alive, dot, 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 die. And of course, this is taken from the quotation, alive enough to have the strength to die. This is oxymoron. We can see here that the speaker feels really angry, but also deceived by their lover, who they feel is dishonest to them. The third and final quotation is when they end by talking about love that rings with wrong. Here you've got uh, alliteration of W rings with wrong, but also you can say that it ends on this declarative sentence, basically saying that love deceives, love Love is dishonest. The next, quote, the next poem to remember from this collection is the um, sonnet, sonnet 43 specifically by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Now, in terms of the way it's written, if you really are going for gold, remember that this sonnet is written as a Petrarchan sonnet. That's the form that it takes and it follows a really particular rhyme scheme. It's a, B, B, A, A, B, B, A, and then C, D, C, D, C, D, okay? So the first octave, the first eight lines, follow the A, B, B, A rhyme scheme, and then the final sestet, so this is six lines at the end of the sonnet, it's C, D, C, D, C, D. Now, the first quotation to remember from this, from this sonnet is when the speaker keeps on saying, I love thee. This is repetition structure. Of course, what this is illustrating is how devoted and how committed the speaker is to the lover. The second quotation to remember is when they are saying how difficult it is to contain their love. They talk about the depth, breadth, and height. This is rule of three, which is a language observation you can talk about. The next quotation to remember from this poem is actually the semantic field of religion that they use. It's almost like this love that they have in this relationship, it was ordained by God. And this is illustrated through these three words, grace, praise, and God. Those are the quotations to remember from Sonnet 43. The next poem within this collection is My Last Duchess. And in terms of a rhyme scheme, it doesn't have a rhyme scheme as such. However, you could say in terms of the way it's written, it is a dramatic monologue. Now, in terms of quotations to remember, the first quotation is the simile, as if she were alive. It foreshadows the fact that he's going to confess that he killed his duchess. The second quotation is when he, we can see that the Duke is very, very arrogant because he says, oh, how could she treat me the same as everybody else? My 900 years old name, okay? Now, this is a declarative sentence and also the idea of 900 years. This is an adjective. What we can see here is that the Duke is incredibly arrogant. The third and final quotation to remember from this is when the Duke finally confesses and admits that all smiles stopped, and you can even add all smiles stopped together. Smiles and stopped is sibilance, and here we can see that the Duke very arrogantly admits that he killed the Duchess and he felt, and he wanted to do that to feel power over her. The next poem within this collection is First date she and first date he. This, in terms of form and structure, is written in ABCB rhyme scheme. And the three quotations, so I've selected one quote from first date she, one quote from first date he, but also another quote that ties them both together. The first quotation is when the uh, female speaker, first date she, says, I hope I look ellipsis sexy, okay? So I hope I look tastefully sexy. Here we can see that the speaker really wants to look attractive to the man that she's on the date with. Of course, 
Also, the guy we can see, obviously, this is why, what makes this uh, relationship for him a little bit humorous, is he feels like she is out of my league. Now, here, this is a really powerful metaphor where the speaker, the male speaker, is basically saying, I don't think I'm good enough for her. The final uh, quotation to remember is how both of them say they um, hit the man or the woman they are quite undistracted by me, which is a declarative sentence. Again, here what this is illustrating in both poems is that there's a miscommunication. They both do not realise that they both have want to have a relationship with each other, but they're both very scared and paranoid and they want to keep up these appearances, okay? The next quotation, or rather the next poem within this collection is Valentine by Caroline Duffy. In terms of form and structure observation, remember that it's written in free verse. The first quotation to remember is this repetitive reference to I give you an onion. It's repeated, which is structure. Now what this is obviously illustrating is a speaker is trying to show a very unconventional view of love. The second quotation to remember is when they're speaking about this onion, which turns into a wobbling photo of grief, okay? This obviously is hyperbole. And what this illustrates is that the speaker is trying to emphasize the sad and dark side of love. The third and final quotation is, of course, which illustrates also how possessive love can get to the point where it can be lethal. The final quotation is cling to your fingers, dot, 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 knife, okay? If you wanted to extend that, it's just cling to your fingers, cling to your knife. Repetition is used there. And of course, what this is illustrating is the dark nature of love, especially possessive love. Now, the next poem within this collection is One Flesh. In terms of form and structure observation, it's written in A, B, A, B, A, B rhyme scheme. The first quotation to remember is this simile. When the speaker is reviewing the parents, they're looking at the parents and they're saying that they look like flotsam from a former passion. Flotsam and former, that is alliteration and also it's a simile. We can see, remember that flotsam means debris, waste from something else. And of course, what they're saying is that this relationship almost looks like the remains of something, you know, uh, some, some fallout, right? Some destruction that happened. The second quotation, which is obviously illustrating the distance and separation between her parents, even if they're still physically together, they no longer love each other, is they are strangely apart ellipsis, strangely ellipsis together. Repetition of strangely, which is a structural technique, um, and also the oxymoron apart and together illustrates the distance, the emotional gap in her parents' relationship. The third and final quotation where the speaker cannot believe that these same people who seem so distant actually once were in love is when they end by saying, um, the fire that the speakers had has now, or rather the fire that her parents had has now grown cold, okay? This fire that led them to, you know, make her as a baby has now grown cold. This is a metaphor, okay? Talking about passion and emphasizing how the relationship, her parents' relationship lacks passion. The next poem in this collection is I Wanna Be Yours in terms of form and structure, A, B, A, B, C, C, okay? Now, remember that I Wanna Be Yours uses language which is very domestic, okay? To illustrate kind of the, um, or it's the speaker's way of humorously illustrating the devotion, the commitment to their lover, the person that they're addressing. Now, the first quotation is when they're saying vacuum cleaner, ellipsis, Ford Cortina. This is a rhyming couplet. Again, they are using very domestic language, very mundane, regular language to emphasize the love and the obsession for the person that they're speaking to. The second quotation is the repetition of the title, I Wanna Be Yours, repetition is structure. And the third and final quotation from this poem is how they're saying that the love is deep as the ocean. They even go on to say deep, 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 which is repetition. Now, deep as the ocean is also hyperbole. The speaker is emphasizing how obsessed they are with this person, they'll do anything. Now, now the next poem in this collection is Love's Dog. In terms of form and structure, remember that's written in free verse. Now, the first quotation I would suggest to remember for Love's Dog is when they're talking about what a love about love ellipsis, zookeeper you. Now here you've got repetition of love and here we can see that the speaker almost wants their relationship, this person, she, they want to give them this control, right? So they love the fact that, you know, this person maybe also controls their emotions. This is shown through the metaphor of the zookeeper. The next quotation, which obviously is co a contrast to love, is the other side of love, okay? So when they say what I hate about love is me, me, me. So you can remember just what I hate ellipsis, me, me, me. The repetition of me illustrates this more selfish side of love, right? Sometimes lovers can grow quite selfish. The third and final quotation is when the speaker says, I hate dot, 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 boil wash, and then I love dot, 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 spin cycle. They are using, again, language which belongs to the semantic field of domesticity, okay, the home, to talk about 
the negative side of love but also the positive side of love in a humorous way. The next poem in this anthology to make sure you remember some quotations for is Nettles and in terms of form and structure observation it is written in an ABAB rhyme scheme. The first set of quotations that I would suggest is remember three separate words which belong to the semantic field of an army or regiment. You've got spears, regiment and parade. This illustrates that the speaker is at war with this net and these nettles that he sees because he wants to protect his child, okay? The love that's being illustrated here is a paternal love, a, a fatherly love towards his son, and he sees nature almost representing the outside world and he wants to fight it, okay? So this is obviously, the, he uses war language to emphasize this. Now, the second quotation is, of course, where we can see that he feels really intensely sad that he cannot protect his son more because his son shows sobs and tears. Here, we've got the verbs sobs and tears what this illustrates is the father, his heart is breaking because he wants to be protective over his son. The third and final quotation which illustrates his fury at the nettles is when he said slashed in fury ellipsis funeral and here you've got alliteration which is illustrating that he's trying to control the outside world however he inevitably can't. The next poem in this collection, so this is the last final two poems, is The Manhunt. Now here in terms of form and structure observation, remember that it's A-A-B-B-C-C, -C, then it's unrhymed, okay? It, reflecting the unpredictability of the soldier's state of mind as he is suffering from PTSD after having gone to war and the lover is observing this. Now the first quotation is when the speaker, the lover, uh, looks at the person's face after his combat from war and they talk about the frozen river dot 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 on his face this is a metaphor illustrating the scars the physical wounds that this man has after war the second quotation is of course when they're describing the fetus of metal in the soldier's chest now the speaker here speaks using a metaphor showing the traumatic effects of war but also how this trauma is making is causing a, a rift between her and her lover the final quotation is when they're speaking about this PTSD, okay? So obviously this lover really wants to guide and look after this man who's come back from war, but they're scared about when this eruption, this PTSD will show itself because they talk about a sweating, unexploded mind, which once more is also a metaphor. The 15th and final poem in this collection is My Father Would Not Show Us, and the speaker here, of course, is talking about how they felt the father was quite secretive. They really wish that the father had shared this illness that they had. And of course, it's a semi-autobiographical poem. Now, in terms of the form and structure observation, remember that it's written in free verse. The first quotation which illustrates her memory of her father is when she talks about his right smile, his half-turned face. This is showing the loving side of her father, but equally his secretive side. Now, the second quotation is when they're talking about how he hid, he hid away. This is repetition. Once more, we can see that the speaker is expressing regret. She wishes her father would let them know about his condition and his illness. Third quotation is when she says, he turned, he turned away. He never shared his illness, his disease, which then came as a real shock to them. And she uses repetition when emphasizing this. So that's really it when it comes to the main quotations to remember for the relationship anthology. Hopefully this kind of makes the journey in terms of knowing what to memorize and what to practice for your anthology side of your exams easier, okay? So thanks so much for listening and I hope this helped.